I went to through the Funk Technique uh, magazine of the 1960s of Germany and you can find it on uh, worldradiohistory.com and it's very very interesting uh, especially about all the old techniques making say television tubes here etc etc and the whole book I mean magazine has a very high quality about everything that's taught so uh, nachrichten. that means uh, short messages about the new developments in electronics etc etc anyway uh, here aus dem Inhalt the content of 1 April 1960 I like to say look at all these old magazines I'm reading them constantly that's very interesting because we are say uh, on the first stages of electronics development uh, only in the 1960s there, there was say a limited range of transistors of course in the scientific laboratories many new transistors were um, say found out invented etc etc so this is more or less the birthplace of electronics and for instance this is a advertisement of Philips about a car radio so very simple long wave medium wave uh, UKG so the FM band etc etc Philips had by the way in those days often these kinds of advertisements I like them. They were kind of funny, optimistic advertisement. And here, for instance, we have uh, the first transistor radios out of Europe. So, a travel company, Reisebegleiter, Komponent, that's what I mean, etc. etc. And here, Leuwe Opta was a very important brand German brand in those days 1960s and here an article about transistorized uh, radios um, abroad from Germany it's very interesting to read etc etc but I want to say pen over only in a very simple way here is by the way that's interesting perhaps uh, a good article about uh, nuclear reactors how they worked etc etc here some overview I don't I know that you perhaps you don't like that I flip my camera but anyway very very interesting etc etc but uh, say let's pan over to the circuit that I wanted to show of course in those days many things were made with uh, tubes but also the first transistors uh, were acti active in those days uh, they, they were in general germanium transistors that were the first transistors that were easy to make silicon transistors uh, were more or less in those days not so easy to make and all the transistors in general in those days 1960s late 1950s were PNP 
germanium transistors with all their properties, especially their, say, temperature sensitivity. But, of course, uh, everything could be made very properly, very, very properly. Here you see an IF amplifier made with germanium transistors. It's in fact this circuit. Etc. Etc. Um, well, it's a kind of C to drink. This is a pure, very good, say, uh, more or less scientific approach of electronics out of Germany out of the 1960s. And here, many mathematics in that book of the 19 book magazine of the 1960s but anyway uh, only thing that I wanted to show is that there is somewhere in this leaflet this magazine and that's what I wanted to tell uh, this very interesting article about an oscillator with a uh, electronic tuning and here it's all about the so-called Wien bridge oscillator and this is the basics of the Wien bridge oscillator there is a Wien bridge oscillator on my youtube channel there are many articles about that also on my youtube channel and here are say more explanations this is of course in German but important to tell that this is the Back, not the back, but the base circuit of a Wien bridge oscillator. And uh, there are two circuits in this article. This shows in a kind of way how the Wien bridge oscillator works. So it's tubes and that's more important more what I like is that they have also published in 1960 a real working circuit of a Wien bridge oscillator with tubes and of course this was a tested circuit but of course now we live in 2022 uh, we don't need 300 volts to supply a tube but whatever that all may be feel free to make this circuit and test it uh, my uh, attendance was to so let's first show the German text for everyone interested in this circuit of 1960. It's also on the website that I mentioned, but this was, uh, this has taken my attention. This was the transistor circuit that was more or less according to that magazine comparable to the tube circuit so i think uh, no one has built it since 1960s but i was interested and there were of course uh, all kinds of resistors here unknown resistors so i made it on the basis of my experience and well let's see how it works when you make such a circuit it's uh, for 12 volt or so uh, there are a kind of general uh, rules the collector resistor is in more or less often in the order of 1k the emitter resistor in the order of 100 ohms and the relation between the two sets in many cases, not in all cases, the, the, um, how the uh, transistor will amplify, etc., etc. 
this is more or less a very important potentiometer. It sets the bias, the bias of distance resistor. And because uh, we, there's a resistor here going to that other transistor, it also sets the bias of the second transistor. So I made a circuit and want to show the results. They are not very good anyway, thanks. Thanks for watching, of course. Here is that test circuit. And here we see the waveform. It's surely not a sine wave that we could expect when this was a real uh, Wien bridge oscillator circuit. Anyway, it has, of course, also everything to do with the fact that the the values of the components were not showed in that 1960 magazine. Anyway, on the basis of my experience during all the years, I've uh, say taken all these values. This is more or less classical when we are talking about the biasing of a NPN transistor, protective resistor. To a high base to high base current. Here we have a kind of, by the way, multi vibrator circuit, and I'm absolutely not sure that this is a real multi vibrator circuit. But uh, it looks somewhat that way, and of course, the Wien bridge sine wave oscillator is a completely other circuit. So, is this a failed circuit? Well, no. Uh, we are talking between theory and practice. Testing a 1960s Wien bridge circuit. Uh, the bias is of course responsible for the oscillation. I want to show that. And well, don't want to pay too much attention any longer to the circuit. Of course, such a circuit uh, needs perhaps uh, other values. You can find them out experimentally, though it takes a lot of time. Here is the bias potentiometer. So here we tune that bias potentiometer and there's a lot more about biasing of transistors on my YouTube channel. Here it works. It gives a kind of peak, peak voltages here. I have to do with this my hand. So here is a, a position on the potentiometer where it works. Most important thing to tell, that's perhaps interesting, is that when you change the value of this capacitor, the frequency goes up or down. That's very important. This 100 nanofarad capacitor. So, a circuit to do a lot of experiments with and of course when you need uh, such a waveform, for instance when you want to drive a transistor on say, uh, this is 2.8 kilohertz, I think that's not true, I have to go to the auto set, the real frequency well, again, it's quite high. So, thanks for watching. Here on the analog scope. A circuit to, say, uh, do experiments with. When you need such a waveform, of course.